Welcome to our first Sunday in Lent 2021. We have eaten pancakes on Shrove Tuesday. We have marked our foreheads on Ash Wednesday. And we enter into our Lenten season preparing for the death and resurrection of Jesus. However you are celebrating Lent this year, whether you have chosen to give something up or to add something new to your life or not, to try a new practice or a new discipline or not, you are welcome. Many of us have been forced to give up so much already in 2020. We are already acquainted with sorrow and loss. However you need to enter this Lenten space, you are welcome. All of who you are and all of who you hope to be. Let's pray together. God of Revelation, unveil your kingdom in all of our midst. Show us who we truly are in you. Expose the illusions that distort our vision 
Deliver us from temptations that contort our living. Open our eyes in this time of trial that resistance may be the secret of our joy and our joy a sign of your shalom. Amen. Hi kids, it's me again. And it's me again, Eric the Raven. And those of you who don't know Eric the Raven, he came to us roughly three or four weeks again to learn about Jesus. And did you learn about Jesus? I learned a lot about Jesus. Hey, kids, Pastor Ingrid has dirt on her forehead. Hmm, shall I say something to her? I think I should. Ha, huh. you have dirt on your forehead. It's not dirt, Eric. It's an ash cross. An ash cross? What is an ash cross? Well, an ash cross, it's, it's put on people's forehead at Ash Wednesday to remind people that they are not made of iron, but that they are fragile and very delicate. As delicate as an egg? Yes, as delicate as an egg. And sometimes it reminds us that God protects us and takes care of us at the same time. But it's dirt! No, it's not dirt. It's dust. Let's say it's stardust. Ooh, stardust. Yes, because we are precious in God's eyes. We are precious, all of us, even us ravens. Of course, and you know, the reminder that we are dust turns our attention to the creative power of God and God's... A what is it? That was an answer for adults. I don't understand the word. Okay, you are right and I'm sorry. Hmm. Yeah, do you remember some days ago when you flew against the lantern post and you were hurting your wing? Yes. I know, but only because there was this nice raven girl. Anyway, it was hurting, right? You were, it was quite painful. It was very painful. So sometimes something within us is hurting. We did something bad or we feel bad or we don't, we made a mistake or we were ugly to somebody and the cross reminds us that we make mistakes and that we don't take good care of ourselves and of other people. Of other people and of other ravens. Of other people and of other ravens. So, do you remember how I took care of your wing? <laughs> it looked funny because you put a white bandage on my Black wing. However and whatever. So I just wanted to tell you in the way I took care of you, God takes care of us, of all of us. So the ash cross means when I broke, when I break my wing or you break your foot, God heals us. Not only this, but when we are broken within us, you know, when we did something we didn't like us to do and we really feel bad, then God heals us. Then we can go to God and say, hey God, I really made an ugly mistake, please help me. And God helps us. Everybody, everybody, all two-legged, four-legged, feathered and finned creatures. Can I have an ash cross as well? Um, later? Shall we pray first? 
Okay. So let's pray. Thank you, God, that we are loved and precious in your eyes. And nothing and nobody can take this away from us. Thank you, God, for Jesus, who shows us how to love and to be loved. Thank you, God, for everybody who shows us how to love and to be loved. And dear God, when we make mistakes or when we feel bad, please heal us because we trust you. Thank you, God, that you love us and we are allowed to love others. And at the end we say, Amen. Today's reading is from Genesis chapter 9, verses 8 to 17. But God was not finished. God had more to say both to Noah and his sons. Look, for I am now going to make a pact, a special covenant, with you and all your descendants. This covenant also extends to every living creature in the world, the birds, the domesticated animals, and every wild animal on the earth. As many as emerged with you from the ark. As part of this covenant, I promised you I will never again wipe out all living flesh by means of flooding waters. Never again will a flood destroy the earth. As a sign of this perpetual covenant I now make between me and you and all living creatures along with you, as well as all future generations, I will hang a rainbow among the clouds. It will serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. And from now on, whenever a cloud rises over the earth and a rainbow appears in the sky, I will remember my covenant, my promise I have made between me and you and all living creatures. No waters will ever again turn into a flood powerful enough to destroy all living creatures. When that rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember this eternal covenant I have made with all living creatures. Look for the rainbow and remember my promise. With it, I sign the covenant I have made between me and all the living creatures residing on the earth. According to Mark chapter 1, glory to you, O God. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately pushed him out into the wilderness. And Jesus was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. The word of the living God. Praise be to you, O Christ. Praise to you and peace from him who is, who was, and who will come again, Jesus Christ. Amen. Last Sunday, 
dear people of Trinity, dear friends everywhere, we were on the mountaintop with Jesus and his friends, Peter, James, and John. And while on that mountaintop, Jesus was changed in front of their eyes, transfigured, so to say, transformed. On this mountaintop, they saw who Jesus really was, a beloved child of God, and they saw God in Jesus. And Peter, James, and John, they wanted to stay, but of course, they had to go back, back into the valley again, to begin their work. Last Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, we together arrived at the bottom of the valley. We were reminded of our fragility and mortality by listening to the words, remember you are dust and to dust you shall return. So we are back from the mountaintop, back into the wilderness of our lives. And the story for today is about wilderness. And here it is. The Gospel writer Mark tells us that Jesus has been baptized by John the Baptist, a prophet of old. And God's Spirit descended upon Jesus like a dove, and a voice came from the heaven saying, You are my son, my beloved. With you I am well pleased. And this same Spirit now takes Jesus by the scruff of his neck, so to say, and really throws him into the wilderness for 40 days. That is meant by the Greek word ek bello, to throw somebody out. So Jesus didn't choose the wilderness. The Spirit of God pushed him, compelled him, forced him into the desolation of a wild and unsafe place. Throughout the Bible, the wilderness is described as a place where we are confronted with our deepest fears. The wilderness strips us of comfort and safety and of all the good things we are used to. And most of the time, of course, we don't choose to enter the wilderness. We don't volunteer for pain, loss, danger, suffering. But the wilderness happens anyway. Whether it comes to us as a devastating, devastating pandemic and its devastating impacts, or a frightening medical diagnosis, or a broken relationship, or a hurting child or youth, or an addiction or the loss of faith and trust, the wilderness appears unbidden and unwelcome at our doorsteps. And sometimes it is God's own spirit who drives us there, who pushes us into the wilderness. And most of the time we don't choose the wilderness where our beliefs about ourselves and others are shaken and where we're experiencing a loss of meaning and disorientation and unworthiness and where we feel pain and loss. Studying theology, of course, you will learn a lot about the great church fathers and mothers, the prophets of old, and the teachers and mystics of the church. So I know of the theologian and mystic John of the Cross, who lived in the 16th century in Spain. But only recently I began to read more of him and about him, and I have to say I'm fascinated by his thoughts and insights. John of the Cross calls the experience of loss, disorientation and pain dark night or dark night of the soul. In our dark nights, he says, and he wrote, we are tempted to believe that God is absent. God has given up on us, withdrawn. Why, we ask, is this pain not ending? Why are my prayers going unanswered? Where is God? However, John of the Cross, he asked the even harder question. Maybe, he asked, maybe Jesus needed to go into the wilderness? Maybe we do need the wilderness? Maybe we have to go into the wilderness? But why? Why do we? And he gives us, as it seems, a very simple answer, he says, to rely on to be dependent on faith and hope and love. 
and he calls it the virtues of faith and hope and love. And he says, faith asks us to choose to step out into the unknown. Hope asks us to choose and trusting ourselves to something we can't fully understand. And love asks us to care without conditions, to care without the expectation or gratification of having helped, having changed, fixed or made a difference. So sometimes we need or we seem to need to spend time in the wilderness in order to learn to accept, to comprehend what it really means to be God's beloved children. Perhaps even to learn what it really means to have a faith that is demanding, tough, and not a kind of sentimental or dreamy. And to learn what it means to have hope, a hope that is heaven sent and not rooted in, in uh, empty promises and love. And to learn to love without conditions, a love that is persistent and tough and relentless, not spineless or weak. Wednesday, two years ago, because, before COVID-19 times, I participated with Anglican brothers and sisters in the initiative Ashes to Go. We stood with our chars filled with ashes at the Churchill LRT Center. At around 7 a.m., it became busy for us. People started lining up to receive ashes on their foreheads and to listen to the words, remember you are dust and to dust you shall return. Later that day, I, I saw when it was a little bit empty, not as crowded as before, I saw or I recognized a man who was attending our community dinners at Trinity on a regular basis. And we had met there at Trinity and we talked. And he told me that he is addicted, addicted to alcohol, 
that his wife has left him, his children are estranged without employment, and that he is now on the verge of being homeless. And then he said in an almost taunting tone, you know, life sucks, okay, get on with it, where is the beer? That morning at the LRT station, he caught my eye. He recognized me, hesitated for a moment, then muttered something to himself and kept walking. He avoided me. Sometimes we are stuck. Sometimes we don't have the strength anymore to change things in our lives. Sometimes we give up in the wilderness of our lives. And sometimes the dark nights don't seem to end. Does it help? I heard a voice behind my back. I turned around and saw him again, this one who has walked away from me the very first time some minutes ago. You mean the ashes? I asked. Yes, he answered. Does it help? Will God help me? I think God is with you, I answered. You know he brought you back already. He looked at me and said, okay, give it a try. And then he closed his eyes and I put my finger into the dust and put some ashes on his forehead saying, remember you are dust and to dust you shall return. And after a while he opened his eyes and looked at me and said, that felt good. I was so tired that morning and honestly I was asking myself, why did I get up at six o'clock in the morning to put ashes on the foreheads of people like working on a production line. So I looked at him and answered, yes, that felt good. You are loved. I am loved. We both are beloved children of God. And I think nothing and nobody can take this away from us. No tiredness, no addiction, no poverty, no exhaustion. And then I asked him, can you do me a favor, please? Can you make the sign of the cross on my forehead saying, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return? And then he did it, a bit hesitantly, but then he did it. And then I said, you know, I pray that the ashes on our foreheads might not only be a reminder of our pain and mortality and fragility, but also that in Jesus we are given new lives, always, every time. You are not alone, and I am not alone. He smiled, and he left. And I saw him again. Before Christmas, last year in 2020, in COVID-19 times, at the 24-7 winter shelter at must of mustard seed, of the mustard seed, where I did some recording for our virtual advent calendar. He was volunteering there, cleaning tables, talking to the people. We looked at each other and finally recognized each other, though we were both wearing masks, and he has changed a lot. I'm clean, he said. I got help. I have a job again and I have an apartment. And then he looked at me and his eyes welled up with tears, and so did mine. He had faith to enter territory unknown. He had hope that there would be a promise held. And he laughed. He laughed himself. And at that very specific moment, he loved God. It is land. And as we continue our journey into land, May we enter with courage and vulnerability the wilderness we didn't choose or even can't avoid. But may we learn to rely on Jesus' companionship for the dark nights in and through other people at sometimes weird locations like an LRT station. And may we have faith to step into an unknown future, to hope without compromises, and to love relentlessly. And may we truly comprehend who we really are, 
the beloved and precious children of God. And the peace of God that surpasses our human understanding may fill our hearts and souls and minds with the peace of Jesus Christ. Amen. season, we will be using a chant as a response for our prayers. We will sing it this week in German once and in English a couple of times so you can all learn it. By the end of Lent, you will know it very well. It's a simple song, but still one I wrestle with, if I'm honest. When we sing, you only Lord can fight for us. I confess, I struggle. Why, in a world filled with such tension and conflict already, would we pray for God to fight for us? Perhaps fight doesn't mean God fighting for us Christians against the rest of the world. Perhaps it means God coming to intervene in our mess, in our troubles, in our pain and suffering. Perhaps it's a plea to have God help us not give up on ourselves. As we begin our prayer, let's begin with the German version of our chant. Let's pray together. 
God of love, hear the cry of those who yearn for love. Fractured families, broken homes, neglected, unwanted, alone. We pray for social workers, counselors, shelter workers, advocates, lawyers, and other people working hard to end systemic and family violence in our world. God of justice, hear the cry of those who yearn for justice, persecuted and oppressed, exploited, ill-treated, broken. We pray for the leaders of the Edmonton chapter of the Black Lives Matter movement, for the Pride Centre of Edmonton, for the Friendship Centre Association, and for union leaders advocating for workers' rights in our province. God of peace, hear the cry of those who yearn for peace in battle zones and broken states, frightful, fearful, anxious. We pray for the countries of the United States, for Brazil, for Israel, for North Korea, for South Africa, and for Mexico. Grant peace, we pray in mercy, Lord. Peace in our time, O send us. For there is none on earth but you. of those who yearn for healing, physical and spiritual, hurting, weakened, depressed. We lift to you those in our midst in need of your touch. We lift those to you who are in grief for the family of Rose. God of mercy, hear the cry of those who yearn for mercy, convicted in need of your grace, contrite, humble, bowed down. May we know the peace of you, the love of you, the justice of you, the healing and mercy of you, this day and all days, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen.
During this Lenten season, we want to offer you various versions of the Lord's Prayer. For those of you who appreciate the traditional version, we will still be sure to offer that one too. The words will be on your screen for you to follow along. So together, let's pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Creator in heaven, remind us constantly that you are parent to all your children, whoever or wherever they are or come from. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, establishing peace and justice, hope and life for all peoples. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Disturb us into awareness of the needs of others. Forgive us our sins, our pride and our prejudices, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation. Especially keep our hearts and minds open to see the good in others. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, just and true. The power, gentle and fair. And the glory, shot through with the colors of love are yours forever and ever. Amen. Receive God's blessings in land. Dust of the earth, dust of the heavens, you are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for life and good works. Dust, though you are, just as you are, you are chosen as holy and beloved. You are God's delight. So be now and free your neighbors to be all they are intended to be, the two-legged, the four-legged, the feathered and the finned. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be at peace. A couple of announcements for you today. The annual report for 2020 has been distributed. It includes reports from our church council, the pastors, and our music director. It also includes reports from property, worship, and music, and of course, our treasurer's report on 2020 and the proposed interim budget for 2021. The full annual meeting to review 2020 and hold elections and make decisions for 2021 is being postponed until we can again safely meet in person, hopefully sometime in the fall. We are asking for congregational approval of an interim budget for 2021 to give Council authorization to continue operations during COVID restrictions. The annual report includes the proposed interim 2021 budget, as well as a description of alternate methods available to you to cast your vote. We have scheduled two information sessions for anyone wanting more information on the interim budget. Join us by Zoom or by phone today, February 21st at 12.30 p.m. or at 7 p.m. The link or the phone number is on our website. Starting next Sunday during, and during all the Sundays in Lent, the pastoral staff will be hosting a coffee time. From 12.30 to 1 p.m., you are welcome to log on to Zoom and chat with us about what you thought of the service, how your weeks have been going for you, and generally how life is for you these days. We miss you. We want to connect with you. We will have a link posted to our social media, our website, and MailChimp. 